What's up, YouTubers? Um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, my whole 2001 Chrysler Sebring project. If you look at my videos, you'll see the work that I've done to my 01 Sebring. Um, before I get into detail and before I say anything, I'm going to tell you right now if you have a Chrysler Sebring, um, a Dodge Stratus, or a Chrysler LHS, uh, th there are a lot of different Chrysler and, and Dodge um, platforms that came with this 2.7 liter. But if you have this motor and you have a rod knock, do not try to fix it on your own. I, I, there's a couple of people here on YouTube, including myself, um, who have done this. And there's one that I know of that was successful with it last time I checked. I, I, I don't know for how long, but I'm just telling you right now, if you have a rod knock, do not fix it. If you like the car a lot, take the engine out. There's There are rebuilders that you could find on eBay. Um, all the prices vary. Um, I can't, I, I, I don't know what uh, you can and can't say on YouTube and what you can get in trouble for, I don't know, but uh, there's a rebuilder that you could find on eBay and they sell their engine for I think $2,300 or $2,500. They go over a whole process on what they do with the engine. Because these motors were known for um, heating up the oil and the oil becoming sludge and clogging the oil passageways. So what they do is they they make the oil passageways bigger and they fix a lot of problems that the uh, engine had with sludge and uh, timing chain problems and water pump issues. Uh, you could find that on eBay. And um, I'm sure if you're here now, you did a lot of research on these engines. And um, from it seems that from what I read from 1998 to, I want to say, about 2004, these motors were garbage. And 2004 and up, I think, I'm not sure, was uh, was the revision where um, they allegedly fixed the problems. A lot of people, what they do is they just take the 2.7s out and uh, they swap the 2.7 for like a 3.5 liter. You know, the motors that you'd find in um, a two, like my grandmother's car, a 2001 uh, Chrysler 300M. You know, they would put that in there. But that's, that's a lot of work in changing computers and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to tell you about my project. My project went like this. I got the 01 Sebring from a woman in her 60s. The car's never been beat on. It's uh, been back and forth to Florida a couple of times. And the car's been trashed once. Um, not, not too bad, but when it was like two weeks old. Other than that, the car had pretty you know pretty easy life cars in near mint condition and uh, she gave me the car for free and um, my mom kept telling me there's something wrong with it and uh, I figured I was getting a free you know good for nice really nice free car because uh, I've gotten many free cars before but they were all junk and um, when I put a battery in this and started it up that knock was there it was a mild rod knock it took away a lot of power from the car but it was mild so what I did was uh, I brought it home and I changed well, I, I dropped the oil pan and um, I found which rod was um, you know which which bearing spun and was um, you know gone completely um, I took them apart one by one cleaned all the cranks the journals you know I, I did everything according to what I read and um, I put brand new bearings in and um, I actually went as far as to opening up the top of the engine by taking the plenum off and the, um, the valve covers off to check for sludge. This motor has 101,700 1, miles. There's not one ounce of sludge in the motor. So I can't, I can't think of why the bearings failed. But I replaced all the bearings. I checked the water pump. Water pump is not leaking. Um, I, I checked the uh, the timing belt tensioner. It was out just a tiny bit like this. It did really, it, there's really no reason for the motor to have failed. So I can't blame it on the sludge. I can't blame it on the water pump. I, I tried everything. 
I mean, I looked into everything, I couldn't find anything. So when I replaced it, started it up, it was good for about, I don't know, a couple of minutes, and then the knock started right back up again. But it was a very, the knock was very subtle. It wasn't, um, it wasn't, you know, you know, huge, loud knock. There was no power loss. But the only different, the only difference was when I drove it on high RPMs, you would hear the knock pretty loud. But while the engine was under load, you wouldn't hear it, and um, it was good. I put about 360 miles on the car before it finally went. And what I mean by went is the knock came back so loud that if I drove it any further, it would probably blow up and throw a rod right through the block. And I really didn't want that. Um, I think that the motor would still be running the way it was if I haven't, uh, haven't put Marvel Mysterio oil in. I put almost a whole bottle in, and I, I don't think I should have done that. But I was so bent on making that rod not go away, I think that's what killed it. Um, my advice to you is if you have a 2.7 liter motor, take it out, get another one. Because I belong to a, cri a couple of Chrysler um, forums on the internet, and a uh, few people have suggested that I take the crank out and replace the crank and re replace all the bearings again but I'm not going to do that because if you think about it like this if you replace the crank on a motor that is running and knocking at the same time there's little metal particles in the motor and within the oil pump and circulating throughout the motor those little metal shavings, particles, whatever you want to call it are circulating throughout the entire motor now when you drop the engine, um, the engine oil pan again and you replace the crank and you go through all that hard work again, you're really not flushing out all those particles. I don't care if you do 10 or 12 oil changes, you're not going to take them out. The only way to get them out is to rebuild the motor and have the motor properly hot tanked and, and cleaned. So my suggestion to you is my videos on YouTube were a learning experience for me and um, it was a lesson that on these type of motors do not try to save them have them rebuilt I wouldn't even get a junkyard motor because you could wind up with the same problem and that almost happened to me too um, but that closes the whole project with the 01 Sebring it now sits in my driveway and it has become a mobile storage facility until I can get another motor for it. Other than that, take care YouTubers. I kind of lost my, oh, here's my mouse. And have a good day.